In today's video, we're looking at some NHL trade rumors, looking at the Edmonton Oilers as well as the Anaheim Ducks. We have some free agent talk around teams like the Chicago Blackhawks and Toronto Maple Leafs. And we also have some updates on the Calgary Flames head coaching position as well as the Arizona Coyotes GM search. We'll discuss all the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As you can see, we're doing another outdoor video here down by the St. John River in beautiful Fredericton, New Brunswick. Of course, in the backdrop there, you can see our walking bridge, which takes connects the north and south sides of our city. Of course, you've seen this bridge before in other videos. Uh, this is a different angle, though. We're recording in a different location, but still kind of gives you a little bit of a, a scenic look here in the background as we discuss the latest NHL news. Now, as I mentioned, we have some updates on the Calgary Flames head coaching position, as well as the Arizona Coyotes GM search, which came from Saturday headlines from Elliot Friedman and Chris Johnson on Sportsnet. The latest talk on the Calgary Flames is that we should know here soon whether or not interim head coach Jeff Ward will be remaining as the head coach or if they're going in a different direction, probably sometime within the next week. I mean, Elliot Friedman reported that they're not expected to drag this out for too long. I mean, Jeff Ward was hired under some somewhat difficult circumstances after Bill Peters had to be uh, released after everything that went on in that situation. So clearly, uh, the Flames don't want to take too long, but, you know, he did do a good job during the regular season, but the team kind of faltered in the playoffs. So they need to decide if he's their guy moving forward here or not. We should know in the not-too-distant future. Now, of course, in the Arizona Coyotes situation with their GM, they do have interim GM Steve Sullivan. He could end up being the full-time guy, and he is in the mix, but there's no guarantee. They are talking to a lot of the same candidates that the Florida Panthers were. Of course, the Panthers have their list narrowed down. Some of the names in the Coyotes search are involved in the Panthers' job as well, uh, but not all exactly the same. We're hearing Kevin Weeks is interviewing for the Coyotes' job as well as the Panthers, uh, and Bill Armstrong, another guy to keep an eye on when it comes to the Arizona job. And Steve Sullivan said could be the guy, and if he's not, and they decide to go in a different direction, he's going to have plenty of other opportunities. He is a well-respected executive around the league so we'll see what happens in arizona shouldn't be too long before we get an answer uh, obviously these teams are going to want to have everything situated well before the nhl draft which really is only going to be a little over a month away now in regards to the anaheim ducks we know that they were very interested and involved in the casper capitan trade talks of course capitan ended up going to pittsburgh but the ducks were one of about six or eight teams having regular conversations with the maple leafs about making the acquisition uh, it appears as though gm bob murray's not necessarily interested in going in a full rebuild He's looking more for a reset or a retool here, as Murray might be looking for some younger pieces with a little bit of experience, and Kapanen kind of fits that bill. Uh, so, unfortunately, he missed out on Kapanen. He wasn't willing to pay the price that Rutherford did in Pittsburgh. However, it is rumored he could be looking at other similar type options, which would include Josh Anderson in Columbus, who's expected to likely be on the move. Could be looking at Jesse Pugliarvi in Edmonton. There's still a lot of uncertainty whether or not he re-signs in Edmonton or if they move on from him. If they decide to move on, I think he would be a GM who would be interested in bringing him into the mix in the Ducks organization. And even a young player like Jake Furtanen in Vancouver, who's certainly been you know up and down this playoffs, whether or not he's going to have a long-term future with the team or not, kind of hot and cold, but he's, he's had his moments where he's been, uh, you know, well-received and productive for the Canucks, and he's had his moments where, you know, they certainly were some question marks around his future and whether or not the team trusts him to play a strong two-way game because it's certainly his defensive side of the puck has been, for the most part, what he's critiqued on the most. Um, however, you know, he still has uh, enough upside that the Ducks would barely be interested if he uh, becomes expendable in Vancouver. They have a lot of decisions to make in, in the Vancouver Canucks uh, organization. We probably won't hear a whole lot about Vancouver's plans until after they're eliminated. They can get a chance to evaluate things and decide what all the future holds. Now, when it comes to free agency, uh, could we see the Edmonton Oilers go after a defenseman like Tyson Berry as the unrestricted free agent? I mean, there's been a lot of talk that the Oilers could be looking to move one, if not two, of their top four defensemen. We've heard rumors around guys like Adam Larson as well as Oscar Clefbaum. We have hear that Ethan Bear and Darren Nurse are likely not going anywhere. They're probably staying put as they're certainly kind of viewed upon as being big parts of the blue line for the future. But if either Larson or Clefbaum is moved, and it's quite believed to be quite a, a strong possibility, could they then go after a guy like Barry in free agency? And of course, Barry's a guy who's likely going to be impacted here. If you throw in the fact that things didn't work out the best in Toronto, so his numbers are down, uh, and at the same time, because of the shutdown and everything that's gone on in the world in the last year, obviously, you know, the uh, the market's going to be depressed when it comes to a lot of these free agents getting paid big time money. It's believed that only a few of the top big names on the free agent market will still get pretty close to what they would have before. But a lot of other guys, and you know, Barry's a good example of that, 
might have to take a shorter term or a lesser valued contract than they originally were hoping for. Many figured when he went to Toronto, he'd have a good opportunity to play with some offensive minded players, have a great season, and either be a big part of their future. If not, either way, he could cash in on a good contract moving forward. But in the case of the Edmonton Oilers, it could certainly would make sense for them to explore a player like him, I think. I mean, uh, adding another guy who could be a, a power play quarterback, he could play well, possibly, with guys like McDavid and Drysaddle on the power play. Having a, an offensive-minded guy like him on the blue line could potentially help them score even more goals, which certainly hasn't been much of an issue. The Oilers have certainly been a little bit more in need of defense, but I think they can address that through some other methods here. Uh, obviously, goaltending is part of that, too, which they need to address. Not sure that Mike Smith returns, but but Tyson Berry, to me, I think makes some sense for a variety of reasons. I think we could probably get him on a, on a pretty cheap contract for one year. For starters, he's a Western Canadian guy, so he would be close to home. Uh, and obviously, who would want an opportunity to play with all those offensively gifted forwards that the Oilers have on their lineup here on the power play, especially even if it's only on a short-term basis. If he does well, he might price himself out of Edmonton because they have all these other Younger D coming up, like Broberg and, and Bouchard. And, of course, you get Bear. Nurse are going to need new contracts in the not-too-distant future, too. So he may not have a long-term place at Edmonton, but might be a great place for him to go to kind of rehabilitate his offense and his career and, uh, you know, just for a short-term basis and get uh, another contract here once things start to get a little bit better economically in the NHL. So, personally, I think it's a good fit, and it makes a lot of sense, especially if they're going to move out another defenseman. So in regards to Tyson Berry being a potential fit for the Edmonton Oilers, of course, that information came from the top free agent list recently put out by TSN's Frank Saravelli. Of course, he goes on to talk about some other defensemen, including Alex Petrangelo, who's right up near the top of the list. Uh, he feels that a guy like Petrangelo likely won't really have to take much of a discount compared to what he would have had before due to everything economically that's going on in the NHL. Petrangelo likely could still command $8, $9 million dollars on a free agent contract. He's made it clear, the Blues have made it clear they want to keep him, but there's a lot of talk out there and I see many other people kind of pushing the narrative about Alex Petrangelo to the Maple Leafs. Of course, could it happen? Maybe, but it's going to be incredibly tough. Uh, and yesterday we talked about the rumors concerning the Blues' other right-handed defenseman, Colton Pareko, maybe going to Toronto via trade, which I still think is pretty unlikely as we discussed yesterday. The rumor was, uh, you know, Janssen, Lilgren, and the first round pick they got from Pittsburgh going back to St. Louis for Pareko, which, you know, is not a bad deal. I just don't really see Pareko being moved by the Blues. Uh, I know, obviously, a lot's going to depend on Petrangelo, and they may have to move out some money to sign Petrangelo. I just don't see Pareko being that player. I think they're going to address that through their goaltending. Having two goalies make $4 million does not help. You get some veteran guys in the forward group who could be either traded or bought out, like Tyler Bozak, Alex Steen, you know, maybe even a Jaden Schwartz, I think would be more likely. I mean, you get Colton Pareko, who's a six foot six right shot defenseman, who is an integral part to their Stanley Cup championship uh, win last year. I just don't see Pareko going anywhere. So, I mean, if he was a free agent, maybe, because it obviously boils down to working on a new contract. So in the case of Alex Petrangelo, does it make sense for the Leafs to go after him? Would they be a better team with him? Absolutely they would be. Uh, if they can get Petrangelo, who would basically be going home like many of these other guys we've seen, like Tavares, you know, he's from the area. Uh, would he be interested? If he can't get a deal in St. Louis, I'm sure he will, probably would be interested. But unless you're willing to move out some money, we're probably talking either a William Nylander type of contract. So if you want to trade Nylander for futures and sign Petro, it's a possibility. Otherwise, you're looking at probably giving up a combination of like probably two or three out of Janssen, uh, Kerfoot, Pierre Engvale, Travis Dermott. You know, maybe Freddie Anderson. There's been a lot of talk around him. Although, if he goes, another goalie's got to come in another regard. So it's probably not for that same kind of deal. But still, either way, for the Leafs to pull this off, either a trade for Pareko or a signing of Petrangelo is going to be incredibly difficult. And even though they would be much better on the blue line, I'm just not sure that overall they're going to be really tremendously better because they're going to have to give up so much to be able to make it happen. So I know Kyle Dubas is quite busy. Uh, lots of moves are being rumored here. We'll have to see what he does, but I just don't see it happening unless they're willing to give up a ton of money. Now, for Alex Petrangelo's sake, I think going to a team like, if he does leave St. Louis, like a team like Winnipeg would make much more sense. Like I said yesterday, they could take the money they were paying Dustin Bufflin, who's no longer on the books, and try to bring him in for that similar type money. You know, obviously they desperately need a, a top blue line or two, and he could be that guy. They have the money in the cap to, to do it, uh, so that would be a great fit. They could go after him and, and really like I said, come back to contending status pretty quick because that's really the big difference between this year's Jets and last year is the, uh, the, the blue line. It's just completely different. But at the end of the day, if I'm a bet man, I still think Petrangio more than likely works out something in St. Louis. They move out some other players besides Pareko to get the job done, keep their blue line intact, 
and make another run at it next year. That's my take, but let me know your thoughts down below. Is Alex Petrangelo likely going to stay in St. Louis? Would the Leafs be able to sign him or trade for Pareko? Does either of those deals make sense? They're going to have to give up an awful lot to do it. Just not sure that it's in the cards either way. So let me know what you think down below. And lastly here, there's another update on Chicago Blackhawks goaltender Corey Crawford after completing an interview with Hawks reporter Ben Pope. He basically goes on to say that he really would like to stay in Chicago, which is not a huge surprise. And it seems as though he might be leaning more towards a shorter term contract. Uh, that might work best for the team given his age as well as his past health issues. Definitely, in my opinion, makes more sense from a, a team perspective. And it also sounds like he might not be so much as too concerned about money. Obviously, he wants to be paid somewhat appropriately. But more than anything, I think he just wants to be able to play and be the starter, get the bulk of the starts. That seems to be what's most interesting to Crawford. He really seems to believe in this team that he's currently with that the Hawks had a good run. Uh, even though it's you know somewhat short-lived, they had a good showing in the play-in series. Look good in round one, even though they didn't advance. Uh, guys like Taves and Kane and others certainly prove they can still go. They get some great young pieces like Kubalik, who needs a new contract. You've got, obviously, other guys that are young, too. Alex Debrinkit, and you've got Kirby Doc, who looks awesome so far. Like, I mean, they have a lot of good young pieces there. Crawford really seems to believe in this team and wants to be a part of it for a couple more years here. So I could certainly see Chicago making an effort to keep him. There is, based on the interview, it kind of sounds like there's been some discussions so far that there might be some multiple options being discussed. It's hard to say how quickly we get anything, uh, you know, resolved and the contract in place if there is. The only thing that could complicate things is there's going to be so many goaltenders on the move between trades and free agents this year that Chicago, as well as many other teams, might very well take their time evaluating what to do because they're going to have a lot of options. As we discussed a few days ago, we had a dedicated video on goaltenders on the move this offseason, and there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot that are free agents, so you know that they need a new contract somewhere, regardless if they stay where they're at or move on. And there's many others that are uh, you know, seriously rumored to be on the move by trade. So uh, Chicago might take their time and evaluate things before they jump into a new deal here with Corey Crawford. Uh, so we'll see. But I would not be shocked if they work something out and he stays with them on a one- or two-year contracts. So, of course, as always, we'll know what your thoughts are on all these potential moves. It's going to be a very busy offseason, very unique offseason with a flat salary cap. And we'll discuss here what everybody thinks is going to happen in the comments. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on the notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.